sharing the fire, adding user accounts. In the last section, we learned how to manage data in Firebase and got basic link submitting working in Live Links. In this section, we'll learn about the different ways that Firebase provides to authenticate users and set up basic email password authentication in the dashboard. We'll interact with the authentication API using the Chrome debugger tools, and we'll put it all together by adding user accounts and authentication to our Live Links application. Let's start off with the first video in this section, choosing and enabling an auth provider. We will explore the authentication options in the Firebase dashboard, enable basic authentication, and play around with some of the authentication APIs in the Chrome debugger tools. Using Chrome, go to your LiveLinks Firebase dashboard and navigate to the Login and Auth section. Notice the wide variety of authentication options provided. The first auth mechanism is the traditional email and password authentication mechanism where user credentials are saved in and checked by Firebase. This option allows you to wire up your own custom authentication forms. The next four options are third-party authentication options, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and Google. These are a great way to make it easy for your users to create and use accounts because they don't have to create and remember a new password. Anonymous accounts allow you to enforce permissions without requiring the user to sign up for an account at all. The last option is custom authentication, which is useful for scenarios in which you are managing user accounts outside of Firebase, such as another web application. For Live Links, we'll choose the standard email and password authentication method. We will go ahead and check the box that enables it. The first thing that you will notice is that Firebase handles our password recovery process for us. We'll stick with the standard message, but it's nice to know that we can customize it later. Firebase even allows you to set up a white label email address that the resets are sent from if you upgrade to a paid account. Now that we've enabled email and password authentication, let's go ahead and create a user using the dashboard. In a new tab, open the index.html file from your Live Links application files and enable the debugger tools, switching to the console. Let's try to log in with the user we just created using the dashboard. Get a reference object for our Live Links Firebase and call auth with password on it supplying the email address and the password of the user we just created. A console log statement will tell us whether or not we've logged in successfully. Let's inspect the auth data that was returned to us in the callback function. As you can see, the auth data passed back contains a unique user ID or UID, the authentication method used, a Firebase authentication token, an expiration date, and information about the password and email associated with the account. Let's go ahead and log the user out calling the unauth method on the authentication reference object, and let's explore some of the error handling capabilities of auth. Log in with the user credentials for our example user, but type in an incorrect password. The first parameter in the callback function for the auth with password function is reserved for error messages should auth fail. Notice we see a message indicating an incorrect password in our debugger statement. Every error case will have an associated code and message to make error handling in your interface easy. You should now have a good understanding about what authentication mechanisms Firebase makes available and how to use the API to interact with one, namely the basic email auth mechanism. In the next video, Managing User Sessions and Data, we will discuss strategies for creating and maintaining user accounts and play around with some of the Firebase API calls that will allow us to do so.